Okay. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, I promise uh, this won't take more than 10 minutes. Uh, so uh, we're going to get to the pub soon. Um, on my project at the minute, uh, we use Zap as part of the um, verification that we're building a uh, secure code. My name is uh, Mark Torrance. Um, I've recently moved into cybersecurity. I'm a security architect for Kinos. And um, I'd also like to mention my colleague, Matthias Kalinowski, who did the Java research for this. So just to set the scene, um, we're using Zap, which is a web proxy. Um, this is straight from the uh, Zap website. It automatically finds security vulnerabilities. That's the key thing. Um, and the other thing that we're going to talk about quickly is Selenium. So Selenium is a very well-known tool. Uh, it's used by a lot of development teams to uh, automatically navigate uh, their web applications. It's written in uh, many languages. Um, and uh, on the project that I'm on, it's already a tool that we use. So the objective is to use Zap um, as part of the pipeline so the web application gets built. Um, and once it's deployed, we use Zap to um, detect vulnerabilities. The problem is that um, Zap is not magic. And so many things can stop in its tracks. And here's a few examples. So uh, we have basic authentication in our project at the minute to uh, keep it a secret from the rest of the world. Um, we've got user logins and also form validation. And when you're doing the uh, passive scans on uh, Zap, all those things uh, will stop it if you don't drive it properly with Selenium. Um, so we already have Selenium scripts in our project. Uh, there are something called Zest scripts on Zap. I don't know much about them. Um, they're a little bit strange, I think. Um, but we already have Selenium, and, and that will do the job for us. So we set about investigating how we would do this. Um, it took me a while to work out the difference between a passive scan and an active scan on this tool. But basically, a passive scan simply listens to the requests and responses that you're making. Uh, so you've got your web browser, you then have uh, your web proxy in the middle, and then your uh, web app. Um, and all you're going to get from a passive scan is things like, hey, your response headers uh, don't seem to be set, uh, you don't have any cache control, and some of these query parameters look a bit dodgy. Um, what you get from the active scan is once it's got the tree of requests, it knows how to actually uh, make a set of attacks on your system. So this is the this is the pipeline steps that we want. These steps mirror steps in a build tool like Jenkins. Uh, unlike manual handling, we want to start Zap uh, as a daemon. Uh, we run our Selenium scripts, which is effectively our passive scan. We have to wait for those to complete. Um, even once uh, the Selenium scripts finish, there's a bit more activity happening in Zap. We want to wait for that to complete. We then start our active scan, wait for that to finish, and then get our reports. So you get supplied a shell script with Zap. Um, this is assuming that Zap is installed on your build system. Uh, there also is a Docker image with Zap on it you can use. And so when you run this, uh, the Zap team will start up. This is the Selenium part. Um, the proxy element is the thing which tells Selenium uh, that it's going to go and use the web proxy. And if you're using uh, security headers in your web application, these are the important elements that you need to use in those settings. So what this is actually doing, uh, Selenium is all about a web driver. The web driver, uh, once you have one, is used to navigate to your page, to find objects, to click buttons. These are the capabilities that you inject into the web driver when you initialize it. And once this is done, uh, you've got a Selenium web driver that is going to talk to your web proxy. 
So the passive scan runs. Um, this is the thing that creates the scan tree in Zap. This gives Zap the ability to do the uh, active scan uh, later on. And you wait for the passive scan using the following endpoint. And if anybody is interested, all the bash scripts and the rest of the presentation are accurate and work. Um, this brings back some JSON, um, and it uses the very handy JQ uh, bash command line tool to read that JSON. And so our bash script is nice and simple. And this is just going to wait uh, continually, sleeping for 10 seconds, and making sure that we get um, all our passive scanning is complete. No more scripts to run. We then start our active scan, hitting this endpoint. If successful, we get a scan ID back. And again, this is the uh, bash script that will execute that for us. And again, we have to wait for active scan. And in the default setting, an active scan may take five to 10 minutes. So uh, you do have to wait for that, otherwise your, your build will break. And again, this is a tool to uh, get the active scan, uh, to determine if the active scan is complete. And here we're waiting to make sure that it's 100% uh, complete and all the active scanning is done. And that's really it. We then uh, can get the scan results. Uh, we can get either JSON alerts and we can also get an HTML report back. This is the uh, bash script for alerts. And uh, this one is for reports. And uh, my bonus slide at the end is um, if you use strict transport security as a response header, you do not get an option to add a security exception on your browsers. Um, and these are the steps that you have to take uh, to make that work when you're using uh, Zap in a manual capacity, you have to pull back the SSL certificate from Zap and add it to your browser. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is that. Thank you very much.